In this video, we're going to take a look at a hypothesis test to determine if two variables are independent using what's called the chi-squared distribution. Whenever we do a test for independence, the null hypothesis is always that the two variables are independent, while the alternative hypothesis is that the two variables are dependent. And in this dependence, we're always going to be doing a right-tailed test. To decide if the two variables are independent or dependent, we're going to organize two contingency tables, one that has the observed data in it, and one that we will calculate that will tell us what we expected to happen, assuming the values are independent. The way we'll make our conclusion is to see how far apart these two tables are. How do we calculate an expected value then? To get an expected value off our contingency table, we'll look at our observed frequencies and take the rows total times the columns total divided by the total of the entire sample space. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's say a tech company tries three new arrangements of keyboards to see how long it takes students to learn to type 20 words per minute on the keyboard. The data is below. We're going to find the expected value if learning time and keyboard time are actually independent. Now with these, the manual calculations are not difficult, but they do take quite a bit of time. I'm going to suggest you do these in Excel. So here I've copied the same data into Excel. And what we see is we have our boards, A, B, C, and then the amount of time that it took them Inside the body, we can see the frequencies. There's a row for totals and a column for totals. These are the observed values. We're going to calculate the expected value for the 21 to 40 hours, the 41 to 60 hours, the 61 to 80 hours, organized by keyboard A, B, and C. When we want to find this first cell, where A is at 21 to 40 hours, we're going to say equals, and we're going to take the A total and the 21 to 40 total and multiply them together. So we go to our observed, the A total, select that one, times the 21 to 40 total, select that one. Then we divide by the overall total of the entire problem. You can do that manually, but Excel's nice because it quickly calculates that to be 24. We can go to the next cell and follow the same formula. This is A and 41 to 60. So we'll say equals the A total times the 41 to 60 total divided by the total of everything, 300. And we could continue to fill in our table in this way. But I'm going to show you another trick we can do. Once we get that very first cell filled in, notice the denominator of the first cell is E5. In the numerator, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the E and the 5. And in the denominator, in front of the E and the 5. Always matching what's in the denominator, that's what gets the dollar sign. What that's going to do is lock that part of the formula. So when I grab that dot in the corner and stretch it across, it'll calculate all those products. And then I can select those in the first row and drag down the dot. And that's going to give me all my totals. I can check this by double clicking a cell. Let's double click the C with the 21 to 40. Notice it highlighted the total for C. 100, the total for 21 to 40, the 90, and the overall total of 300. If the right cells are highlighted, I know my formula worked. And now I have all the expected frequencies if these two events are independent, if typing speed or learning time is independent of what keyboard the students learn on. Now that we know how to calculate the expected values, we're ready to find the test statistic. And in this case, our test statistic is what's called a chi-squared statistic. We've already seen the normal distribution, or the z, 
and the student's t distribution, or the t, this new statistic is the chi-squared distribution, which is not symmetrical like the normal on the t. It's actually skewed right, and the minimum actually occurs at zero. There's no negative values on chi-squared. It does go to a maximum value of infinity, and its exact shape is actually determined by the number of degrees of freedom. You can see in this graphic at right that if there's only one degree of freedom, it comes down and levels out, versus in green, you see with five degrees of freedom, it comes up and then goes back down. So the shape is really determined by the degrees of freedom. So how do we find our chi-squared? The formula for chi-squared, first the symbol for chi-squared looks like a curvy x. That's our chi-squared is equal to the sum of the difference between the observed and the expected squared divided by the expected value. And the way we calculate the degrees of freedom on this chi-squared is based on our table. We take the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. And once we have our chi-squared and degrees of freedom, we can actually find the area underneath the curve or the p-value for our hypothesis test on Excel. To do this on Excel, we'll type in equals chi-sq.dist.rt for right tail, and then we'll put our value for the chi-squared, comma, the degrees of freedom. Let's take a look at that for this example. I like to make a third table to help me calculate my chi-squared using the same labels that I had before, 21 to 40, 41 to 60, and 61 to 80, A, B, and C. The formula for chi-squared was the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. So we'll say equals, open a parentheses. And for A21, A21 to 40, I'll click that observed minus the expected value for A21 to 40. A21 to 40, click that cell, close the parentheses, squared with shift 6, divided by the expected value. That same value that we just used in the numerator. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me a value that kind of measures how far off the expected is from the observed. Now I can click that dot and stretch over, click the dot and stretch down, and that gives me all the pieces of the chi-squared. Now chi-squared is equal to, I can say equals, the sum, open up parentheses, of all of these values in my table. Our chi-squared is 13.31. That is my test statistic. Notice we've got three rows and three columns. So for the degrees of freedom, we take the number of rows minus 1, which is 2, times the number of columns minus 1, which is 2, and we can see the degrees of freedom is 4. We're ready to find our p-value then. On Excel, it's really easy. We say equals chi sq for squared dot dist dot rt for right tail. Open a parentheses, and I'm going to select that chi squared value, comma. The degrees of freedom was 4. I could have selected that value. Close the parentheses, and when I hit enter, we find a p-value of 0 0.0098. Remember, the null hypothesis is that these two variables are independent. With a p-value of 0 0.0098, we're going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis that says these two variables are dependent on each other. Or it seems that the amount of time it takes a student to learn to type 20 words per minute is dependent on the type of keyboard the student is working with. So hopefully this video was helpful for you as we learn to conduct hypothesis tests to determine if two variables are independent. Remember, the null hypothesis is always that they're independent. The alternative, 
always that they're dependent, and we're going to do a right-tailed test to see if we can reject the null in favor of the alternative. Good luck as you try some of these.